So I'm delighted for our first event to have as our guest, Bjorn Sonstetter, who is Professor of Applied Mathematics and the Director of the Data Science Initiative. And um, I'll let him take it away from there. So thank you so much for the, for the uh, invitation to be here and uh, for the kind of introduction. So I would like to begin with a disclaimer. I'm not a mathematical neuroscientist. I'm a really an applied mathematician. Um, and so what I'm going to talk about is really more for a few minutes, I don't have, I only really have one slide that I would like to briefly go over. Um, just my own impressions of, of um, how mathematics interacts with, with neuroscience and with some of the challenges and opportunities that, that I personally would be very excited to, to work on in the, um, in the near future. It's kind of difficult to compress this all in one, diff in one, in one single slide, but I think for me, what is really fascinating about the brain is that um, it's an amazing apparatus uh, that takes sensory input, um, allows us to experience the world outside, and uses information to, to make decisions, to move, uh, behave in different ways. Um, and it's an extremely, as you know much, much better than I do, it's an, an extremely complex um, part of, of, of living organisms. Uh, it has many, many multiple levels of feedbacks. Um, it, it evolves over time in very rapid and very slow fashions. Um, and so one of the challenges is really, is what we're all trying to do, um, is try to decode um, the brain, trying to understand how the biophysics, the mechanics of how the brain functions relates to high level functions that we, uh, that we undergo. And so, what mathematics can do, it can help formalize some of this. Um, it, it, it allows us to make mathematical representations and models um, that we hope have some relation to what the brain does. Um, many of those, and this is the area that I'm most familiar with, so I'm going to focus a little bit more on those, are based on differential equations. Um, they can be designed or developed um, to model individual neurons. Um, they can look at how synapses work, um, come up with fairly complicated, um, sophisticated models for either single neurons or then taking it to the next level for coupled systems of neurons. Um, in some structured networks where there might be different types of neurons, different types of connections between them, there could be inhibitory, excitatory. Um, and so then the question that one could ask is then how can these mathematical models, what, what predictions do they make? What kind of behaviors can they reproduce? And then the, the goal would be to go back and link this um, to behaviors and um, decision-making that we see that the brain does. Um, there's really a whole range of, of models and um, as I said, from individual neurons to global activity patterns in the brain or in, in regions of the brain, one can try to understand how, depending on certain tasks that you ask subjects to do or that we, are, uh, that we undertake, how does dynamic shift between different regions of the brain, how are different brain regions connected, how does activity um, shifts from one pat from one region to the other one as people go through different tasks. And for all of these um, different aspects, you can design models. I think the key question then is really how to link these models, uh, fill them with life. And most of that is done using data. Uh, this could be imaging, this could be um, recordings from neurons directly. Um, this can, can go anywhere from single cell recordings, um, EEGs, fMRIs, calcium imaging, um, and so the key thing is then really how to relate those and how to use the data um, to inform the models and then try to understand what the model predicts or does and link it back um, to, to um, the richer questions that we, that we try to understand. So I think that for me, the main challenges and opportunities are um, that are sort of currently there is that a lot of these mathematical models need a ton of parameters. If you have a, a coupled system of differential equations that is supposed to reflect um, a large number of neurons in a, in a, in a network, is there are so many different parameter values that may or may not affect what the dynamical system, what the differential equations give as an output, is that linking the data more directly uh, with these differential equations um, is, is really something that becomes more and more important. And that, um, that now that there are so many data available, um, it's actually something that becomes more and more feasible. Um, the difficulties are, um, first of all, that many of these data do not give you direct information about what single neurons do, is they are often indirect measurements. So calcium imaging, fMRI, both signals are examples for those. So there are steps in between pre-processing, processing data, and then connect them with the models. Often these data are huge. Um, there's, there's an enormous amount of them. Um, so doing Processing these data, using them in real time is complicated. Um, I think one of the things that one can then try to do is 
um, as a next step is trying to think about parameter estimation. These mathematical models are often static. The parameters are chosen in a certain way. That's our choice. Then they produce a certain output. Um, but often these parameters change over time. They change as subjects do certain tasks. Um, so finding ways in which we can, similar to what deep learning networks, artificial intelligence is doing, change these parameters um, on the fly, either through optimization techniques, um, trying to use techniques like, like differential programming um, to design closed loop experiments that allow us to do in real time a, a back and forth between what the model predicts and what the experiments tells us. I think these are um, challenges, I think, that, um, that at the same time basically create huge opportunities for us to, to better link models with, um, with recordings, imaging, and data more generally. So all of this was more about specific models that you would like to fill with life, that you would like to take parameters for. I think there's also um, various ways in which meaning could be extracted from data without actually having an explicit model behind it. Um, so supervised and unsupervised learning, time series analysis using, using dimension reduction, um, topological data analysis. There's a number of tools that people over the past, past few years have, have tried to bring to bear on these problems. Um, that do not rely on explicit models, but that use um, different types of techniques to extract information from, from time series data or, or recording imaging data is another huge area that I think is, um, is going to sort of become more and more at the forefront of what people have been trying to do. Um, so this was all I wanted to say. So just really sort of a broader, very, very broad high level overview. Um, and I would love to just talk more what specific questions you have about various different aspects of what I talked and did not talk about. Uh, and also learn from you, what you think the challenges for mathematicians are and where mathematicians, data analysts can help you do your work um, better.